grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, welcome to this service from St. Peter's Anglican Church in Cremorne. The Anglican Church in Australia re recognises the Sunday prior to Remembrance Day as Defence Force Sunday. As we anticipate the commemoration of the sacrifice made by so many on the 11th of November, today we recognise and seek to uphold in prayer those who continue to live lives of sacrifice in the service of the Australian Defence Force. This is an important day for me and for us as a church, for alongside my ministry here and with the encouragement and support of St Peter's, I serve as a chaplain in the Australian Army Reserve, a role which has seen me deploy in recent years in support of the bushfires earlier this year uh, and a couple of years ago in support of our troops deployed to the Middle East. We are joined for our service today by the Anglican Bishop to the Defence Force, Bishop Grant Dibden, who after a long career in the army as a regular officer and then as a chaplain, was appointed as the bishop in March of this year. On Defence Force Sunday, we seek to recognise our debt to servicemen and women who are willing to put themselves in harm's way to do our bidding. As we do that, we cannot help but be moved to gratitude and even obligation to our Saviour, whose life was deliberately laid down for us. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord.
prophet Micah address God. Who is a God like you who pardons sins and forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. Well, in passages like this, the Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we should, nor loving others as much as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Only you can save us. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and all people and to live for your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, God desires that no one should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us join in a prayer for peace. God of the nations, whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Shed abroad your peace in the hearts of all and banish from them the spirit that makes for war that all races and peoples may learn to live as members of one family in obedience to your law. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the Defence Force. Eternal God, the only source of peace, we pray for all who serve in the Australian Defence Force. Give them courage and comfort in danger, patience in waiting, and discipline in the just use of force. Help us to seek for all people the freedom to serve you and each other in compassion and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I invite you now to pause the service and to read through some of our readings for today. Our first reading comes from the book of Joshua, from chapter 24, as Joshua addresses the people in the promised land which God has given them. Psalm 78 begins with an expression of a commitment to continue to speak of the wonderful acts of God in rescuing his people. And our gospel reading from John chapter 15 calls us to live lives characterised by the sacrificial love which Christ has shown towards us. As we pause to read God's word, let me pray. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. When they arrived, he began to draw back and to separate from the Gentiles, because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. When they saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, 
I said to Cephas in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law no one will be justified. But if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners, doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, hello, my name's Grant Dibden, and I thought on a time such as this, it'd probably be helpful for you to know a little bit about me, particularly um, my military uh, background and experience and those sort of things. Firstly, I think uh, I've, I come from a, a long line of people in the military. My, uh, my grandfather served in World War I uh, on the Western Front uh, for the British Army. Uh, my father served in World War II. Uh, he started as a 39er, went all the way through the war. Um, he was sunk twice, uh, cast adrift. He was at Dunkirk and he was at Dieppe. Um, my mother served in World War II. Uh, she was in the RAAF uh, here in Australia. Uh, obviously, I've been in the military 26 years in the full-time army and then uh, 15 years as a chaplain before I became uh, the Defence Force Bishop. Uh, my son currently serves as a reservist uh, in the Australian Army and I've got a nephew who's also uh, in the Australian Army. He's a young officer and attack helicopter pilot. So um, quite, a, quite an extensive uh, connection uh, with the military and so it is a real privilege uh, to speak to you uh, today because um, it, it is a day uh, when we remember uh, many things. 100,000 Australians have died in wars. The vast majority of those are aged between 18 and 25. And while we don't glory in war, we do remember the sacrifice of those who went before us. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God of love and liberty, we bring our thanks today for the peace and security we enjoy. We remember those who in time of war faithfully served their country. We pray for their families and for ourselves whose freedom was won at such a cost. Make us a people zealous for peace and hasten that day when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither learn war any more. This we pray in the name of one who gave his life for us for the sake of the world, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. O God, our ruler and guide, in whose hands are the destinies of this and every nation, we give you thanks for the freedoms we enjoy in this land and for those who laid down their lives to defend them. We pray that we and all the Australian people, gratefully remembering their courage and their sacrifice, may have the grace to live in a spirit of justice, of righteousness and of peace. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, they mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short of days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold on high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though proppies grow in Flanders fields. A poem, we shall keep the faith. O oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valour led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And in the torch and poppy red, we wear in honour of the dead, fear not that ye have died for naught. We teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields, in Flanders fields we fought. Let's sing together, O oh God our help in ages past. Bible reading today is from Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing.
Can you imagine what it was like for Australians here during World War I? Out of a population of 5 million, 62,000 were killed. 150,000 were wounded and 400,000 returned from war. So about one in three households had someone directly affected by the war. Let me tell you of just one small battle in the Gallipoli campaign where 10,000 Anzacs were buried on that Gallipoli Peninsula, far from their homes. One of the fiercest battles was at Lone Pine between the 6th and the 9th of August 1915. The Australian casualties at Lone Pine were over 2,000 men, while the Turks estimate their losses at just under 7,000. General Birdwood wrote, We dragged a 1,000 corpses out of the actual trenches, which gives some idea of the fighting and was irrespective of the large numbers lying around outside. The presence of the dead and the dying all around in the confined spaces of the pine was something that those who fought there will never forget. Private William Tope of the 12th Battalion recalled one Turkish counterattack where, bo where bodies that were lying around saved his life. He says, I thought the best thing would be for me to be down in the trench that had no men in it at all, where the bodies were, because I felt that the counterattack could come at any time. I'd hardly got into position before an absolute avalanche of bombs fell, puncturing these bodies, and up on top, you hear the air coming out of the ones up there. I think they were aiming for the bodies they could see. I was sheltering behind them, and I was there for all the day and the next night. Then suddenly, it all stopped, just like that. Something of the desperate nature of the struggle can be understood by the fact that seven Victoria Crosses were awarded to Australians for their courageous service at Lone Pine. Five of them for actions on the 9th of August on 1915 alone, an unprecedented event in Australian military history. Over 100,000 Australians have paid the ultimate sacrifice in war. Over 60,000 in World War I, just under 40,000 in World War II, 500 or so in Vietnam, and more recently, 40 plus in Afghanistan. Death is an integral part of war. As a Vietnam War correspondent recently wrote, death in war is brutal and infinitely disgusting. The truth is hideous. It is to have your guts ripped out by shrapnel in no man's land or to slowly drown in a torpedoed warship, or to be burnt alive in a shot down bomber, or in our own time, to be blown to pieces by a jungle booby trap or an improvised explosive device on the road in Afghanistan. No glory in that, he writes. Death leaves great holes in people's lives. I didn't mention earlier, but my uncle, Private Roy Jones, was an ordinary bloke and he was killed on the Kokoda track on the 24th of September, 1942, two days before my mother's birthday. He was just 22. He was from Birch Grove, and the local Anglican church set up a temporary memorial to the fallen, and the parish letter of 1950 records that my grandmother used to place the flowers from her garden on the shrine every week. War hurts. It's not to be glorified. And as we remember today, when an armistice broke out to end the Great War of 1914-18, we remember the 10 million people who died in four horrific years of warfare. The human cost to Australia, to our nation, and the people was enormous. 417,000 were raised for service in the army. Of that number, 330,000 served overseas. 58,000 men were killed. 
and 156,000 were incapacitated as a result of the combat. And yet, and yet th there is something noble about sacrifice, isn't there? It's partly why we have Remembrance Day. And our reading to today from Galatians 2.20 talks of the sacrifice of Jesus. I have been crucified with Christ, it says. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, Jesus' sacrifice is very personal. This verse tells us that God sent his son to die in your place. He gave himself for me, and that's singular. Yes, Jesus did die for everyone, but the facts of the matter are that God loved you, and you, and you, individually, personally, so much that if there wasn't anyone else on earth, he would still have sent Jesus to die for you. And he did that while you were rebelling against him. We don't think about rebellion much today. Sin is fundamentally rebellion. Sin is going our own way, doing our own thing, running our own lives. And that includes living lives in some ways as if God doesn't exist. That's what the Bible means by sin. So yes, the big sins are there, of course. Murder, bank robbery, pedophilia, they're all part of it. But so are the wrong things that we do every day. The angry thoughts, the lust, the lies, the greed, the words that we say, the unkind things, the not doing what you know to be right, the not submitting to authority, which is a great Australian pastime. And the other great Australian pastime, cheating on your tax return. Those things are sin too. It's the stuff that we hope no one finds out about. These two are the outworkings of rebellion. They're the outworkings of us running our own life. Let me illustrate this. Sin is a bit like having the measles. You can get a bad case of the measles or you can get a, a difficult case of the measles, but you've still got the measles. You can get the measles all through your hair and down your throat and everywhere. That's a really bad case. And that's like being a murderer or a, ped or a pedophile or something like that. But you can also get a very mild case and you can just put on some calamine lotion and it's okay. But you've still got the disease that is sin. We all rebel against God. We're all sinners. And some of us have got a worse case than others. And putting on the calamine lotion doesn't really help us. Changing behaviour to become a better person because... The problem, the real problem, is the disease itself. It's the sin, it's the rebellion that we have. So Jesus' sacrifice, his death for you personally, for you alone, when you're rebelling against him, is quite something, isn't it? Let that sink in. Let it sink in. Jesus, the second person of the triune God, the one for whom and by whom and through whom all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. That Jesus, he died for you. Now that blows me away. And I'm sure that blows you away too. So it's clear that we didn't do anything to deserve this. We didn't do enough good things to earn our forgiveness. We were in rebellion. And just like in the military, but much, much more serious is our rebellion against God. And so God says that it deserves punishment. See, our forgiveness, our reconciliation with God is a free gift. We cannot possibly pay it. But God pays it. Jesus pays it for us on our behalf. But there's a catch. It's not much of a catch, but there is one. You see, you've, you must take this gift. So if I say to you that you can have my house, you can say, well, that's wonderful, Grant. But you haven't got my house, have you? 
until you come and take the gift, until you take the keys to the house and I move my stuff out and you move your stuff in, then you have the house. You've got to take the gift that Jesus offers for us. You see, it's even more extravagant than that. It's even more extravagant because it's not just a house that Jesus is giving us. It's like he's giving us Buckingham Palace. It's like he's giving us this wonderful gift that there is no possible way we could, we could afford. So you might have been able to buy my house from me, but there's no way you'd be able to buy Buckingham Palace. And that is what God is offering to us as a free gift. He's offering to us eternal life. He's offering to us to be reconciled to him. And we've got to accept that extraordinary gift of Jesus' death on our behalf. See, we can't be like Switzerland in World War II. We can't be a neutral country. There is no neutrality. You're either reconciled to God or you're not. You're either rebelling or you're not. Jesus laid down his life for you and for me. Jesus died in my place, in your place, to pay the penalty for sin that we deserve for the wrong things that we've all done. What a loving God who foots that bill of redemption, of your redemption, and offers us freedom and dignity, life eternal, heaven as a gift. You and I don't have to do anything except accept that gift. And then, of course, we want to live for him out of gratitude for the amazing love that he shows to us by laying down his life for us. Taking this extraordinary gift requires you to submit to Jesus' rule, to stop rebelling against his rule, to stop running your own life and to submit to him in every area of your life. Sure, you'll never behave perfectly in this life, but you can repent, you can say sorry, you can turn from your sin and come back under Jesus' rule. Those people who died for us to be free it touches us in a deep way. It's a story, really, of sacrificial giving and living and loving. The precious threads of sacrifice run through the hope that we have. It's woven right through that story and it's woven right through the story of what Jesus has done for us. You see, Jesus purchased freedom for us in a spiritual sense. And the soldiers... The ordinary men and women who have died in the service of this nation fought to secure us freedom in an earthly sense. We've all benefited from their death of those soldiers. And today, we remember them. I remember my Uncle Roy, even though I never met him. We remember the thousands of people who died to give us freedom. We remember their sacrifice, lest we forget. Well, 
do pause the service again and spend some time in prayer, praying for peace in our world, for the church throughout the world, for those in need and for those who serve in our Defence Forces. There are some resources in our service sheet to help guide your prayers. And then I encourage you to close in the Lord's Prayer. And now let us together affirm the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.